you know, you need to put a more, a, a lot more work in um, if you if you don't pass the ten second test. And what the ten second test is, what I call the ten second test, is if you can say your father's name and everybody in the room automatically recognizes who you're talking about. If you can describe your father in 10 seconds without saying his name. Um, sorry, with saying his name and saying a bit about him. So I'm sure even if I stayed here for one hour and I started talking about my father, nobody would be able to actually guess or pinpoint who he is. But if I said my father is spare me or ten dollar, then I don't need up to ten seconds. In fact, within three seconds, you've already all grasped who my father is. So I think that um, I'll call this talk. Um, entrepreneurship for people that don't pass the 10 second test because the 10 second test is very important in Nigeria. It shows the strength of your relationship, it shows the strength of your family brand. And if you don't have strong relationships and you don't have a strong family brand, then you're going to have to put a, more, a bit more work in um, to create that brand and create those relationships because this is a very relationship driven society, as everybody knows. Um, when I lived in England, I realized that. One of the major differences between England and Nigeria is the power of relationships. In England, because your fingerprint is linked to your ID card, which is linked to your passport address, which is linked to millions of CCTV cameras across the country, you don't really need to be able to trust somebody before you do business with them. Because you can walk to the nearest police station and then find the person out, the official person out. So we have a very, very um, high trust society. But in Nigeria, you have a very, very low trust society which is built around relationships and it's built around trust and it's built around brand and it's built around who you know and continuous learning as well. Um, I think that when you're trying to connect with people and when you're trying to add value to people, um, which you'd have to do to build those relationships, um, you have to sound super, super solid. You have to um, be completely on top of your game. And for people like me, that studied medicine, I didn't really know that much about business. Um, and I think even when I, I started my business, I was not completely familiar with the language of business because I studied something academic um, and technical. Um, so I had to spend a lot of time on online um, learning the language of business so that I could have business conversations and I could say things that would make people trust me. Um, the first time that I really messed up in business and ran out of money, um, I worked for a few NGOs like the UN and um, high risk um, other NGOs, so it was a B2B business. Um, and I, he asked me, you know, what, what your cash flows, your revenue, bring your balance sheet, bring your cash flow statement, what your audited accounts, um, what, is, what, what, is, what what's the business about? And I told him, you know, that. Um, a few stories about patients that were transferred before. Um, we do a lot of work with babies, taking them into Lagos and Abuja for treatment. So I started talking about the pathogenesis of um, premature babies and uh, congenital heart disease and the risk of respiratory distress. He said, No, no, but where's your cash flow statement? <laughs> and I said, You know, that these babies, I mean, prematurity is one of the biggest causes of death. In children, um, especially in the first week of life, but what well, he said, you know, but well, what I'm looking for is why you are in a cash flow problem that was in the first place that I, my business had run out of money. Um, but the only reason why I even ended up in the head office asking for the loan in the first place is because one thing that I had done very well was finding the people in my local branch. So I was very good friends with my account officer. When my area manager was doing his, um, his dad died, he sent me a WhatsApp and he sent me the ugliest Ashwin B that I've ever seen. It was like brown and kara, really, really a dirty, horrible brown. And the thing was now in some village in Anambra. So even when I got to Uwuri, we had to drive like five hours to get to the village. And it was so hot and horrible, but I thought that this guy might be useful to be at some point in my life, so let me just go for the journey. And he was the one that actually drove me into the head office to get the loan, so I'll talk about relationship development later. Um, but one thing that he taught me was that I hadn't learned to speak the language of business, and because of that, 
it really, I wasn't coming to him with any name. I was only coming to him with a statement. And it made me seem untrustworthy and uncredible and not like somebody that he should be giving a loan to. Um, he was very patient with me. He helped me restructure the business. Um, he helped me speak to some of the vendors and communicate with some of the vendors and make sure that they paid me a bit earlier so I wouldn't run into the um, problems that I had. But one thing that he did tell me is you have no idea what business you are in. You think you're telling me about babies, about congenital heart disease, about respiratory distress, about cardiac arrest. That's fridge. That is not what we are doing in this bank. What we deal with in this bank is money. And unless you know about the language of money, I'm afraid it's just your area manager that is kneeling down to beg for you now. But left to me, I wouldn't have given you this facility in the first place because you didn't seem to know what you're doing. Um, so I had to go back and start learning um, about business and learning the fact that the technical business or the technical work of what you do is very, very different from the business of what you do. So lawyers are not necessarily good at running law firms. Hairdressers are not very good at necessarily very good at running hairdressing outfits. Uh, doctors are not very good at necessarily running hospitals or air ambulance services because even though we may have mastered the technical work of what we do, I was one of the youngest doctors in England. I was immediately immediately I graduated. Different countries started courting me to do academic research in their countries. I eventually went to go and live in Japan because I got a scholarship from the Japanese government to go and study pluripotent uh, stem cells very, very in the University of Tokyo. So I really thought that coming to start an air ambulance, I would know what I was doing. But actually, the business of what I do or what my profession is was very, very different from the technical work of what, um, of what I did. So um, I didn't have very much money at the time, um, and my first stop was YouTube. And at that time, I don't know if any of the networks did that, but they were doing like some promos where between 1 and 7 a.m. you get like free data or very, very cheap data. So I started at YouTube and I started sort of researching. And there's some things, no matter what business you're in, you can always get better at certain skills. Skills like negotiation, skills like sales and marketing, skills like public speaking, skills like communication, skills like leadership. So I gathered all of these um, videos into sort of one um, file and started watching them one by one. And I took each business skill for a week on YouTube and started looking at all the videos. Now, um, I've done all the hard work for you. If you go to at my Jaffline doctor, um, which is my Twitter handle, you can find over a thousand videos that I've carefully sort of curated over the years into different business categories so you don't have to. Um, but at the time, I, was just, I started by going through all those YouTube videos. Um, and then I moved into listening to audio books in those same categories. So I downloaded an app called um, Audible.com. It's free off Amazon and you get your fir first book there free. Um, and I started listening to books in those areas. Um, I started um, trying to learn about um, business from all of those audio books and I downloaded, right now I have on this phone probably about 100 on my other phone probably about 80 audio books. And that enabled me to learn when I was driving to work, it enabled me to learn when I was like falling asleep, it enabled me to learn when I was typing, um, as opposed to using a physical book that you need your hands and you need full attention for. And it also le um, helped me um, be more accountable because obviously I could now go uh, listen with my husband as well and we would stop the audiobook at some stage and talk about some of the things that we've learned, have a big sheet on the wall and write things down and really like brainstorm about some of these business content, um, um, concepts. Because if you don't pass the 10 second test, then you must sound credible. And you must sound more credible than people that do. So it's very, very important um, to be able to find these resources and use these resources. Because you need to get to the point, I think, and I, I tried to get to the point where I was so good that they couldn't ignore me. That I was, that I was so good that they couldn't ignore me. Okay. Because I was so good at what I was doing, I was so good at communicating, I was so good at reading people, and I had such diverse knowledge that I could actually make small talk with anybody at events about their area of speciality or what they were doing, so that um, I could build relationships 
more easy. And relationships are the key to business in Nigeria. So I think when using your time, um, the key to using your time is trying to dedicate that time towards as much time as possible towards continuous professional development. So I've spoken about the YouTube, which is the rudimentary level. I've spoken about the audio books. And then you can go on to do courses on uh, Coursera.com and um, on HarvardX as well. Uh, Coursera.com actually has a lot of free um, courses from American universities that you can add to your CV. But it also helps with this language of business thing that I'm talking about. And it also helps with your networking. So I went to, I was in LA last week. And it was people on my former economics course, actually, that I was hanging out with and staying with. Because I met them online and we started talking. And obviously, a few of them were doctors as well. So they really struggled with economics and accounting, like me. And I've known them for years and we kept in touch. We follow each other on Twitter. So when I got to LA, it was like a big reunion of people that I hadn't seen before. But I, on, online, you can be part of 1,000 people in a discussion course, taking a course. And eventually, you grow to the point that we're doing business with each other as well. We're talking about different ideas. So I think online courses, especially on Coursera and Harvard, um, Harvard X, have been very, very um, useful for me as well. Um, so um, then you can start going abroad for courses as well. But I don't advise that, to be honest, because you leave your business. I was paying like maybe $1,000, $2,000 to go on a course abroad, plus the cost of the ticket. But on Coursera, those courses are like one one. $100 and I get far better networking opportunity online than I even do when I'm flying out for those courses. So I have to go for courses abroad anymore. Most of my learning is done online now and I think that that's the future for learning. And also when you're training your staff, um, most of my training is now in-house for my staff. Very, very important if you're employing people to make sure that you're training them up. And um, lynda.com on LinkedIn has a lot of courses that you can do. Well, you can also use YouTube for that. And if you want to make sure that they're doing the training that you're giving them, then you can go to classmaker.com and you can set exams on those videos. And it's also a free application. So before even somebody starts in your organization, or maybe in their first group when you're doing the onboarding, just set a number of YouTube videos that are targeted at your audience and then set an exam on classmarker.com and it will tell you the questions that they got wrong, you will analyze their whole professional development. So even if you don't have the finance to bring people in, you can still train people on YouTube, download the videos with them, make sure they watch them, and then the classmarker.com, the exam application is also free to use. Um, so that's really about continuous learning, both for us as entrepreneurs and um, for our team members as well. Um, uh, changing the people that I spend time around. 99% of the people that you meet in this earth are not serious people. Like they're not people that really want to be rich, they're not super ambitious. So you find that when you need to, if you, and I'm assuming that everybody here are business people, super serious business people, they want to succeed, they want to build good businesses, most people are not like you. Um, so you must find people with your own kind of value relationships between people like yourself, people of like minds, are really, really important. And then in terms of networking, um, making sure that you spend your time strategically networking. Um, and there's two sides to this. There's your market strategy where you're networking with clients, um, you're networking with vendors, um, you're making sure that you can sort of get the both best skills from both sides. But you're also networking with people that are essential to your business. Customs, in my case, FAM, Ministry of Aviation, the stakeholders in your business. Knowing somebody in customs can be the difference between you waiting one month for your goods and four months for your goods. So when they're doing something, they have all these events, customs at this, customs women, uh, customs, you know, go along. When he's celebrating, when the customs guy that you know has just had his child, go along. Because this is the non-market strategy that may seem insignificant and people don't concentrate that much on. But these are the things that really can make the difference in terms of your business. So as well as you, some, for some people it might be last month people, for some people it might be police. And in fact, I think police are important for everybody in business. No matter what business you're in, try and know somebody in the police. Try and know somebody in um, NASA, if you're in a food business, for instance. 
this is a non-market strategy that can help you along. These are people that can advise and guide. And they're not market strategies. So they're not the people that will help you with marketing. They're not the people that will help you with business strategy. They're not the people that will help you with picture. But they're the people that can guide you. They will be alone in CBN. Like there are some people. Have a bank card, have somebody in CBN. Because there are some funny loans in CBN, right, that nobody really cares about outside. But they're there. All kinds of groups of money that will be there, and you might not recognize that they are there. Um, Everybody knows that I love Dan Bote. And one of his key things is to just look at the budget. When the government brings out PRGP, for instance, um, growth plan for the country for the next four years, read it. He underlines everything so he knows where they are going. So you two can also follow in the same direction. People think that Dan Bote is controlling government. No, but he takes his time to look at those things. They're producing documents. Every day, the government is producing documents. And if you read those documents, and you know what angle they are going, so you can attack them from that angle. It's easier to go in the same direction as them. So I think it's very, very important to maintain a good network of people that have access to information. And those people that I mentioned, police, NAFTA, customs, they always have access to information. They will know at CBN. They will know when something has come out. They will know when that five percent loan or borrow scheme or something is there. They will know the way that you should put your applications. So it's very, very important to have friends in different kinds of places, and not necessarily just the important ones. I think somebody once told me, spend fifty percent of your time looking up and fifty percent of your time looking down. Sorry. Sometimes it's a PA that will be very, very useful to you. Sometimes it's a terrible of security will be very, very useful to you. Those are the people, uh, in terms of the people that you spend your time around and the people that you strategically network with, those are the kind of people that can be useful in, in hard times. Like it wasn't Jimovia that was useful to me when I needed my loan. It was my area manager from the group, that the Anambra, that was very, very useful to me. And he was the person that facilitated uh, that facility that I needed at the time. And probably if I had not been able to access that facility, I wouldn't be in business today. Um, so that is super useful. So I've spoken about the way you use your time and the way um, you, in terms of managing your circle of friends. The last thing I will speak about, money is very important. I believe that business, you can make as many mistakes in business as you like, as long as you have money to be able to pay for those mistakes, you'll be okay. There are very, they're, yes, there are very, very few problems, business problems that you have in this life that cannot be solved with money. And that's why it's very important um, to sort of learn how to manage money. But the only area that I would advise you to be promiscuous banking. is in banking. <laughs> Make sure that you interview every single bank to find out where you are going to get the best relationship, the best interest rates on your savings the best, lowest possible rate of your loan. Because these are all money management secrets. And also your COT, all those charges, make sure that you negotiate them to the bare minimum. And find the account officer, area manager, you're better your relationship with your area manager. Well, it depends on the structure of your bank. But for most banks, and let me give you, let me even give you the blue here since I'm here. Zenith Bank has a structure that is on its own, a bank of Zenith. So it's not controlled by the head of they have a branch structure. Yeah. So therefore, the person that you need to target is your area manager. Some banks, you find out that they have a head office structure, which means that definitely for any major decision, you need favors that may necessarily somebody may not get. And even if it's just 1%, 2%, what shares should I invest in? What fixed deposit rate should I do? They will go the extra mile for you to make sure that you get those things and are able to manage your finances and are able to manage your savings and investments much better than the average person that does not have a relationship. Banking is a relationship business at the end of the day. Um, so that's super important as well. So I've talked about uh, managing your circle, I've talked about managing your time, and I've talked about managing your money. And with these three points, I rest my case. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if you have questions, let's take questions now. Um, from what you said, especially about talking about uh, Dan Mutti as a model to fund, mm -hmm. 
inquiry, you know, he posted last week on Twitter that he was saying something about ninjas, the Lebanese, the yeah. Indians, that their model is better than some of these oligarchs. Yeah. And I thought you were classing the whole thing in that oligarch model. I think that Bhutto is a hybrid. I think that he, he uses government relationships very well, um, but I also think that he has, there's a business model behind it. He's not going to an MPC and just collecting subsidy money either. That you can see the product. Whereas a lot of our billionaires, we're not even sure, we cannot even deduce what the business is actually. You know, I posted one video where the guy was just saying, I'm blessed. How did you make your body? I'm so blessed. Not blessed. He himself doesn't even know how to explain the nature. And there's so many guys like that in Nigeria where they themselves they don't know their business model. They just know that they are blessed by God and it's Jesus that did it. That's different. Those are the real economic terrorists. Where no matter how long they explain to you, you can't grasp how they're making their body. That's a different case. But then you can see that okay, there's a product there, at least you can see it everywhere. It's not exactly blessed. There's a factory where the thing is coming from. But a lot of our billionaires in Nigeria, there's no factory. They don't know from Yeah, no, there's no factory, there's no product. There's just one envelope with some papers inside and they're just using it to juggle some things. Okay, so I'll take more questions if you have any other questions. Okay. I don't, I don't exactly know my question. <laughs> 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 more, more. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of managing money, when you were starting off, um, how did you manage to get your first staffs, or first staff to work with you, first set of staff to work with you? In terms of finance, how do you manage the finance for you to accommodate them? Yeah. How do you do it? So I was paying for my salary. So I had some savings and I paid for my salary at first. Um, and then obviously, like, I wasn't banking for it. I couldn't get any startup capital. Nobody would lend me any money. And I, in my, like, I, I was not, I could not even put together a business plan in the first place. So I'm sure a lot of people in this room are far better than me. But what I did have was a really good idea. And I knew that at least there would be one company in Nigeria that would need it. So I went around some of the oil companies, had meetings with them, and surely there was a oil company with an acute need for the service I offered for their offshore staff and for their onshore staff. So um, I then went about finding somebody that had an aircraft and I said, you know, how much would this cost for me to lease for a year? And they told me the price. So I then went back to the oil company and I said, okay, you know what? I, f I have an aircraft, but you guys will have to pay me up front for the year. And they said, okay. So I just facilitated. And I think on a much different scale, actually, you can run customer funded businesses with almost any type of business. So for example, like normally, I, I had a church event, that's why I'm wearing a but normally I wear suits, and the lady that makes my suits runs a customer fund that she will never raise capital. Because I go there, I drive, I live in Ikeja by the airport, by my office, and I drive all the way in heavy traffic to go and meet her, not in Lekki Phase 1, in Lekki Phase 2, Ibrahim Adesoya. And then she proceeds to collect my money for five suits, and she doesn't produce those suits for six weeks. And she's doing the same with like 20 other people. But the reason why I prefer her is because she's really, really good at what she does and her suits make me look nice. So I'm willing to like pay up front for her services. There's a tailor two minutes from me and my estate. But she's just not that good. And I've not found anybody that makes suits like her. So I think as far as you're good at what you do or you are serving an acute need, you can actually run a customer funded business and on my favorite website Coursera there's actually a whole course a six week course on customer funded business models there's four types I think of customer funded business models but I'll tweet it anyway at Niger Blind Doctors I did it um, my Twitter handle is at Niger Blind Doctor so I'll tweet the YouTube and I'll tweet the customer funded business model um, link for you but there's like six different types so four to six different types of customer funded business models that you can use so you can start without really having any capital. Because I didn't have any start of capital. I just broke a different action. And after I managed to get my cash flows from that, that was when I actually had capital from my customer to run the business. Oh, okay. Thanks.
Sorry? Your foot hairs. My Timberland shoes. Okay. My, my, your foot hairs. Yes. My you have someone that makes your um, shoes for you. Yeah. You have someone that makes you as well. You know, because I used to be very, very broke, um, and I had to really, I really had to manage in my life. I actually, when I was young, I only had two pairs of shoes. Um, and, you know, now I just don't see any use of having more than two pairs of shoes. Uh, so I still only have two pairs of shoes. Why do you see a shoe that is going to be a shoe that I don't, I don't buy, I don't engage in material things at all. So I'm not like, I'm like the most, um, I have one bag and two pairs of shoes. And I think it was because of those hard times, the habit just continued. So now I just don't buy stuff anymore. Like I just don't engage with the material world anymore. Look at my phone, for goodness sake. Like I'm just not, I've just become, I think there's two ways that you can go. If you grow up like quite poor, then you can either become that person that when you make money, you just start to like buy everything you need to, you need to be doing cash copy on Instagram and all of those things. Or you just, maintain those same broke habits and unfortunately I fall into the second yeah the, those same broke habits I so like I just maintained that lifestyle. So how did you get an access to those and why companies are saying that they want to introduction. So um, I started from the NCAA and I asked the director of the NCAA to um, help me with registering an air ambulance. So he introduced me to his deputy. His deputy happened to be the ex director of um, uh, AB my medical certificate and all the certificates I've gotten and I said you know this is the business that I wanted to start so he helped me to introduce me to a few people that he knew in the oil industry those people introduced me to other people that they knew in the oil industry and I gradually was able to build my network um, from there um, but there's some trips that I made obviously that didn't work out at all so there was this time <laughs> I hope she won't be offended to start. I'm telling you this story. I'm sure she uh, 4,000. Yeah, it was 4,000 naira and it took ages um, to get there. And I got to her office and I didn't see her till 4 p.m. Uh, but I was waiting for a life changing meeting, so it was okay, right? It was Abdel Mohammed, who's now at the UN. But then she was at the um, Department of um, the Millennium Development Goals. So the pilot had thought, okay, air ambulance really fits in well. Eternal mortality. And I have no idea how I was going to get back to Lagos. <laughs> 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 I 